Good morning, and welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church in Concord, North Carolina. We welcome you to this service of the Word of God today and every Sunday at 9 a.m. We also invite you to Tuesday night prayer, Tuesdays at 8 p.m., and Wednesday noonday prayer, Wednesdays at noon. All of these services are available by looking at the All Saints Episcopal Church, Concord, North Carolina website or on our Facebook page. The service order for this service is found in your notes with this service. We welcome you again to this service. Thank you for joining us and being part of our church family. O God, the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us for ever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestil, and sand famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth labors into thy harvest, and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, 
to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of thy Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their trouble. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to support Help and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. That it may please thee to grant that, in the fellowship of all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, my Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. No. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. And God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the son of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And all the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the son of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Join me in reading Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trust all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth, and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches the way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made a lob in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace in the name of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture texts this morning take us all the way back to Genesis, the beginning of the world, really, and the story of Noah. We pick up at the very end of that story, and to refresh your memory, God said to Noah and to his sons, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When you first read that text, it sounds a little bit anticlimactic. Noah, the story of Noah is, is a long story. It takes four or five chapters of Genesis to tell the story. And here at the very end, God is saying, well, of all the thousands of ways that I could destroy you, there is one that I won't use anymore. And by the way, uh, you know, I may have a bad memory, so I will tie this celestial string around my finger in the form of a rainbow so as to remember not to destroy you again with water, lest I forget. That's not a very satisfying understanding of this scripture. I think to understand it more clearly, we have to delve into its context. And to do that, we need to go all the way back to the opening verses of Scripture, where God sees the primordial void. It is nothing but chaos, and from it, God creates order, land and sea, and beautiful things, animals, lovely plants and flowers, humankind made in his own image, and he sees that it is very, very good. But mankind takes a wrong turn. And at the beginning of the story of Noah, in the opening verses of that story, in chapter 6, it says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination, every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made humankind on the earth. Can you imagine a world where every human being's thoughts were inclined toward evil all the time? There would be no justice, no peace, no love, no kindness, no empathy, no giving, no sacrifice. It would all be a world where each person was centered only on themselves to the expense of all others. It would be a chaotic place, and I'm sure a horrible place to live. And God saw that man had taken this turn. And God was sorry he made humankind. That word sorry can also be translated into the word or the phrase that God was filled with grief. And for the next 40 days and 40 nights, God's tears of grief fell upon the world, and all life was blotted out, save for a remnant. God saved Noah and his family, 
and God saved the menagerie that was with him and the life that was with him so that he could restore life, could restore the relationship that people would have one another and that God could restore his relationship with humankind. My brothers and sisters, the bow that is laid down by God is not just a pretty rainbow of multicolors in the sky. It is a weapon of war. God lays down the most sophisticated weapon of war known at that time. A weapon that could kill humans from yards away. This sign of destruction God lays down and says, from now on, I will not war with mankind anymore. It's a seismic shift in the relationship between God and mankind. God will no longer be at war in, at, in enmity with mankind, but rather he will be mankind's protector, humankind's lover, humankind's caretaker, and will seek to foster a relationship with humankind based as a father with his children, loving them and nurturing them and helping them to grow into his image. It's important to note that from that point on in Scripture, water is not again used as a method of destroying God's people, but rather is a method of their salvation. The seas at the Red Sea part so the people can come across into the wilderness from Israel to escape Pharaoh and his armies. In the wilderness, God uses Moses' rod as it taps a stone wall, a rock, and water comes pouring out of it to nourish the people. The people cross the Jordan River, and as they do, as their feet step into the Jordan, they come into the promised land, a land of milk and honey that has been given to them as their home. The Assyrian general Naaman is healed of his leprosy by bathing seven times in the Jordan River. The waters restore him to good health. John comes baptizing with water to turn people, to turn their hearts away from their own self-centeredness toward God, a new life, a new being, a new creation that they can become. And then Jesus is baptized in the water and he rises out of the water to bring salvation to all the world. And as he mounts the cross with his arms outstretched on the cross to embrace all humankind, he becomes the living personification of the rainbow. For in the rainbow, God's arms are outstretched across the sky to embrace every person, everything on the planet. And Jesus does the same. We would do well to remember that God brought us to salvation also through the waters of our baptism. We are now entering uh, the season of Lent. Lent, for many, over the years has been portrayed as a time of penance, as a time for getting down on our knees and groveling before a wrathful God that he might find favor with us. But my brothers and sisters, if that is your concept of what Lent is about, then I would ask you not to observe any Lenten practices. For if you observe Lenten practices of penance and self-examination in that context of believing that you are trying to please a wrathful God, then you will only harm yourselves. No, you need to understand that text from Genesis. God has laid down the bow. God is no longer your enemy. God seeks to love you, seeks to restore you, seeks to bring new life to your soul. And the meaning of Lent is the meaning of that, that God is bringing new life to us all.
the word Lent is from the old German word, the old Anglo-Saxon word, which means the lengthening of days. Springtime, when the days are longer, the sun is out longer, and new life springs from the earth. God seeks to restore us during this time, to restore our souls, to bring new life to us. And our Lenten practices are not about trying to please a wrathful God, but are about opening our hearts to turn back toward a God who loves us, who would have us be something better than we are, who would have us be family, who would have us be brothers and sisters, who would have us be our children. As we move through this season of Lent, perhaps one of the best Lenten practices that we can engage in is to look back at the time then that we were brought salvation through the waters of our baptism when we were bathed in God's love to that baptismal covenant that we made or others made on our behalf to turn and follow the Lord. Let us look then at our baptismal covenant and as we do so, open our hearts to this Lenten practice of reaffirming our commitment to that covenant. We are questioned in this way. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? Will we continue in the apostles' teaching? To do so, we need to study scripture during this period of Lent to understand that teaching. Will we continue in fellowship and the breaking of the bread? hard to do in this year of the pandemic. But fellowship can be engaged in over the phone or through letters and by participating in all the video offerings that are offered to stay connected with the people of God. And in the prayers. Lent is a time when we are to be focused on prayers prayers for the restoration of the world, prayers for the restoration of our souls, prayers for one another, prayers for a new world, prayers for peace. It is a time that we should particularly focus on prayer. Will you preserve and persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? In the old days, before the flood, man's heart was continually focused on evil. We are to be the opposite. And in every way that we can, to seek out the good and to resist the evil and to turn from it. And when we fall into sin, which we will, believe me, we will, when we fall into sin, we are not to wallow in it or hate ourselves for it, but we are to repent and turn back to God. During this season of Lent, we should also focus on this question. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? My friends, each of us is called to be an evangelist to spread the good news of God throughout the world. Not just by our example, but also by our words. We must have the courage to tell others about the love of God and what it has done for us and how it has changed us. We are asked in our baptismal covenant, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And my brothers and sisters, we are asked to see in every other person the living reality of our Lord Jesus Christ, to seek out that good in other persons. 
and we are to love our neighbor with all our hearts and souls as we love ourselves. Lent calls us, my brothers and sisters, to learn to love ourselves and to see others as God sees them and to see ourselves as God sees us, as his beloved child. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? God's outstretched arms in the rainbow and Christ's outstretched arms on the cross are to embrace all people, every person, regardless of ethnic background, race, creed, politics. God loves all people, and we are called to do the same. This is our Lenten practice, to turn, to live into our baptismal covenant. Can we do this on our own? No, we cannot. But as the baptismal covenant states, we will, all of us will, with God's help. When I was a young boy, I didn't care too much for going to the doctor's office. But my doctor had this wonderful nurse her name, I only know her nickname, I don't even know her full name, her formal name, but she was known as Boots, that was her nickname, B-O-O-T-S, as in the boots you put on your feet. And Boots was a caring and loving nurse and a wonderful person. I remember she, when I went to the doctor, she would always try to comfort the children and make them feel comfortable. And I remember one day going into the doctor's office and she actually let me hear my own heart through the stethoscope. She put one end, the ends of my ears, and put the other end on my chest. And I remember Boots asking me, what does it sound like? And I said, it sounds like somebody knocking on the door. In this time of Lent, we are all called to listen to our own hearts to look into our own hearts and hear the Lord Jesus Christ knocking on the door of our hearts to enter in. That is what we are called to do, to make room in our hearts that Jesus might come and dwell in us and empower us to live into our baptismal covenant that we might bless others be restored to who we were meant to be, the children of the living God. Let us pray. Creative and passionate God, you delight to shape the world in beauty and in harmony. You invite us to share in your work, bringing peace to chaos. We grow in wisdom as our experience as humans unfold. We take a good learning out of the difficult situations of our lives, yet we are held back and held captive so often to our interior demons. Too often we give in to temptation and the chaos within that disrupts our lives and the lives of others. Lord, we cannot undo all of our mistakes, nor can we still all the turmoil that is within us, but we can turn once more to the living presence of Jesus Christ and find new ways to live and love each other and the earth. We can find, by your grace, new ways to honor our baptismal covenant. Lord, do not let our hearts be fearful but let us be still and acknowledge our sin and our inner demons and seek your forgiveness and the power of your indwelling Holy Spirit that will restore our lives. Amen. Let us join our voices as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate through the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at right, the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. During Lent, instead of the normal blessing that the priest usually gives, we offer a solemn prayer over the people. After my invitation, I ask that we reflect for a short moment of silent prayer, and then I'll pray the collect. Please respond, Amen, at the end of the collect prayer. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, for thy tender mercy's sake, lay not our sins to a charge, but forgive that is past, and give us grace to amend our sinful minds, to decline from sin, and incline to virtue. Good morning. I'm Chris Edscorn, Food Program Manager here at Cooperative Christian Ministries. Every month through our drive-through pantry here at the Crisis Center, we're serving about 800 households 
um, which represents about 3,000 individuals, including a lot of children and senior citizens. And we couldn't do it with a lot of help from our community. Y'all have been great, and we sure appreciate it. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Bob. I'm a volunteer here at CCM. I've been volunteering for um, a couple of years. I first signed up to volunteer because I felt I wanted to give back to the community. But volunteering here really gives me the opportunity to receive. I, um, I am able to assist the community. Um, the gratitude that we receive, we volunteers receive from the community, uh, both, both spoken, uh, occasionally written, and sometimes um, just looking in their eyes and hearing their stories is very moving and it makes for just a special ministry. And we can only do this with the assistance of each of you in providing what we need in order to meet the needs of our community. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Larry. Uh, I've been volunteering here at uh, Christian Ministries for quite some time. Uh, started with my uh, wife giving me some advice to come and volunteer here because for a lot of years I spent out in the working world and didn't have time to volunteer that much because of travel and relocation and all the work that I had to do. So when I finally retired, she said, you ought to check out CCM. They do a lot of good for people. So I did. and. To cut a long story short, I've been here for quite, quite a few years now, and it's a real blessing because uh, everybody needs some help every now and then. Everybody needs to be treated special every now and then, and, and that sometimes they have a hard, some hard luck. I've had that myself in my past, and it's quite a blessing when you're able to give them some food to help them along the way. And it's even a bigger blessing when, when you've helped somebody out, and then maybe a year or so later you go out and... Here's that same person giving you some food to hand out to people with a smile on their face and actually a tear, a tear in my eye. So, I, again, thank you so much for everything that you do and the help that you can give us and giving us some food that we can hand out to some people who need it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chuck. And we're delighted as a men's group of All Saints to be organizing our fourth food drive in the past year to help our community. And we hope that you'll join us in helping our community by donating food. Hi, I'm Don. Our next food drive is going to be Saturday, March 13th, between 9 a.m. and noon. Bring your food to the All Saints parking lot and we'll get it over here to CCM. Uh, if you want us to pick it up on your front door, go to the Weekly Word, sign up using the link that's available there, and we'll pick it up. Either way, the food will get here and, and go to the right place. Thank you very much for your help. Mm -hmm.